like that. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the butterflies. Go get your man. And I feel like butterfly gonna be captain. So all y'all wanna know what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, every single one of y'all that watch this content, whether religiously or in passing. But let's just get right off into this thing, man. Sue Surf. Salute to Sue Surf and everything that he's been able to accomplish in his career, whether personally or professionally. Uh, he is incarcerated right now. He was facing a federal RICO indictment for a conspiracy, racketeering, and some firearms and ammunition charges. He went to jail last year. It's been about six or seven months, you know what I'm saying, since this thing happened. And I spoke on the situation when it first happened. And everything that I speak from is public record, whether it be from a news article, whether from a legitimate source. I don't try to come up here and make satire or embellish things that have happened with him to try to, you know, talk about it if I don't know. So when I last spoke about it, I did speak about the fact that he was arrested and the things that was going on with him. And, you know, when he was out, I did speak to him. I spoke to him before he went in. I spoke to him on different occasions. I went live with him on Instagram one time. And I got a kind of good feeling to understand how and where he's at with it. You know, when I spoke to him, a lot of this stuff was things that were from the past. But in this situation and in the streets, the past can catch up to you real quick, especially when it comes to statute of limitations, other people who catch cases and things like that. I do have the news article. I will read the news article and then I'll just give you my personal thoughts and you know what I'm saying? And my prayers go out to him and his family and things like that. And if you do want to write him, you know what I'm saying? His address is available too, where you can write letters and things like that too. But uh, so let's right, get right into it. So an article comes out from um, RLS Media. It was written by Yaritza Arroyo. And it says, uh, Essex County gang member admits to racketeering firearms possession. And then it starts by saying, federal authorities announced that a member of the New Jersey street gang admitted to his role in a racketeering conspiracy and fire and possession of firearms and ammunition by a convicted felon. According to federal officials, Rajon Cox, AKA Sue Surf, 32 of New Jersey pleaded guilty by video conference on April 27th to two counts of a superseding indictment charging him with the racketeer influence and corrupt organizations, RICO, conspiracy, and possession of firearms and ammunition by a convicted felon. Officials say from 2015 through September 22, 2022, Cox was a member of the Rolling 60s Neighborhood Crips, a criminal enterprise responsible for acts of violence and the distribution of controlled substances in New Jersey and elsewhere. Cox held a leadership role within the enterprise on March 18, 2017, Cox shot at a, four, at a firearm at a gang rival. On July 24, 2019, in Essex County, Cox, a convicted felon, knowingly possessed two loaded firearms. Authorities in authorities, the racketeering conspiracy count is punishable by a maximum of 20 years in prison. The charge of being a felon in possession of a fire of a weapon is punishable by a maximum of 10 years in prison. Both counts are punishable by a fine of up to 250,000. Sentencing is scheduled for September 12th. So I read the article a time or two, and basically what I gathered from it is that Surf was facing 30 years in jail. So in this scenario, facing a RICO that's potentially up to 20 years maximum and a 10 year maximum, this is 30 years and he's 32 right now. He'd be looking at doing up to 62. Taking a, you know, pleading guilty often bodes well, especially when it comes to plea agreements, you know what I mean? But I, I, it did not say that, it said he pleaded guilty. So uh, for admitting his role in what was going on here. So here's the thing, right? I tell you guys all the time, I'm from the Bronx, I'm from the city, you know what I mean? I, I done seen a lot of different scenarios where people in the streets, violence, drugs, guns, and at the end of the day, there's only two things that come out of really, really being in the street and being in gang life. It's either jail or the graveyard, you know what I'm saying? And I know for a fact that Sue Surf was one that was working his way. He had moved to Atlanta, he was living in Atlanta, but a lot of the things that he did previously are the things that have caught up to him in the end. And what I must say is that I hope, I do, I really do hope and pray that regardless of the scenario and the outcome when he is sentenced on September 12th, that he comes out and, you know, be, it does what he's supposed to do. He's super talented. He could be an ambassador for the community. A lot of people love what he do. And I'm saying he did a lot of good things. He did the basketball shit with the trenches, had like 
all kind of players down there. He had like Nike down there. He was doing big things. He was hosting the, you know, the battles, doing the streaming and all of that. He was uh, cool with Drake. The music was moving. And for battle rap, he was definitely one of the next stars that were, I mean, he was a superstar in battle rap. But watching his transition musically, like seeing him albums that was charting on Apple Music. Like, he dropped the album the same week as a lot of different big names and he was still getting a lot of support from the battle rap community. And to see where he was heading, to see it get cut short, you know, it's highly unfortunate. I'm not gonna lie, it's highly unfortunate to see Surf in a scenario like this. Now, when it, a lot of people will say, well, why did he plead guilty? You guys gotta understand, like, you know, there's an old song by 50 Cent on Power of the Dollar. He said, when the feds come in the game, loyalty is limited. Hardcore niggas start acting feminine. In the feds, you do 85% of your time, so if they give you 10, you damn near do nine. You know what I'm saying? I know some of y'all might know that joint, but um, it sticks with me well because when it comes to these fed cases and fed time, you get 10 years, you're gonna do eight and a half. You're gonna do damn near nine before you're even eligible. This ain't no little state thing where you can get five and be home in eight months or it's because the jail was too crowded. The people that know, they could jump in the comments and say, and the feds have such a high conviction rate. Their conviction rate is damn near 92%. Why? Because most people plead, or most people plead guilty because when they come, they have you. People always say that. When the feds get involved, they already have you. There are people who are willing to fight shootings, murder cases, assaults, anything. They will fight on their own. But the RICO or, or, or racketeering or conspiracy, they want out. I don't want to face them because you're not gonna. It's, it's damn near impossible to win. Only a few people have won. John Gotti beat. I mean, Irv Gotti. The Rico was created for John Gotti, but Irv Gotti, he beat a Rico. He beat. He beat it, but it cost him so much that you know he cost him so much money. It cost him his label. It cost him his brand. And while he's not in jail, his career was never really the same. They 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 play for keeps. You know what I mean? And um, I hope that somebody who's watching this video who's whether in the streets or you know, probably making bad decisions and doing things like that, learns from this and learns that, look, it might be cool. You know, it might be cool to be in the streets and to get them looks and the girls and the money and the fast life. But at the end of the day, you gotta know that it could end like this. You could potentially be sitting in jail for summer after summer after summer. And you know, you a lot of you guys that are out here in the streets don't have big fan bases or don't have money or don't have ways to generate money and income and stuff like that and I promise you I will tell you because my brother's you know, you know he's got like a year and a half left off a 20 year sentence and after a while after the first couple years it'll probably be your baby mama maybe your mama maybe your brother or maybe somebody like that but all the people that say they down for you and that's gonna ride with you and all of that they, they, they get out the car I'm just be honest with you and another thing is why a lot of people plead guilty in these scenarios when they catch these cases I don't know the exact number, but I know it was a number of individuals that were arrested in this indictment with Sue Surf. My dumb niggas is not, everybody don't wanna go sit down. So you got two, three, you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten chances. And when I say six, seven, eight, nine, if I get locked up with nine people, I got eight chances that somebody is gonna roll. You know what I'm saying? And that somebody is gonna get me to sit in jail for a long time. So if it's me, I might, you know what I mean? You might, you might wanna just see what they're offering see your plea, make sure that it don't involve me having to drop anything else on anybody or tell on anybody, and if I can get something sweet, man, I gotta just go ahead and sit down because that's just the way the game goes. If you fight it and take it all the way to trial and they have so many mountains of mountains of evidence against you, you are only gonna sit away for a long time. I seen the dude, uh, he was in GS9, I think his name was Quano, right? The, they hit him with a 15 year sentence. They offered him 15. He turned it down, oh, I don't wanna do 15, because Bobby had got seven, Roddy had got seven, and a lot of other people that was involved got like five and three and shit like that. But he had like a big charge in it. So they offered him 15 and he turned it down, they gave a man 147 years, bro. I think it's 147, let me, let me look it up, you know what I'm saying, like, I really do, I think he got 147 years after he turned down, yeah, 117, I apologize. Yeah, and he cursed out, the, I looked it up, it says uh, he fired back at the judge and was cursing at the judge and things like that, but he got 117 years. Life is gone. So, uh, with all that being said, man, um, you know, this comes as not the greatest news in the world, but I know there are people who watch this content who do literally watch this like their news sources. And, you know, I have to talk about it because it's, a, it's public record, you know what I'm saying? The website is out there. I did see the website. And someone sent it to me, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't even 
like I don't be on there checking every day. Oh, is it going to court? Is this case happening yet? What's going to happen with it? No, but when these things come out, people do know bloggers and do know people in a um, bigger space, and you know they uh, they let us know the information. I look at it if I feel like it's credible, then um, you know I'll blog on it and report on it. But I must say, uh, you know, my prayers go out to Surf's mom, to Surf's family, to Surf's daughter. You know what I'm saying? To Surf himself, and I hope I really do hope that a valuable lesson comes out of this and that when he does return, where however long it may be, that, you know, you, you just do something better, you know, because you're way too talented, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, at this point, I just feel like, you know, it's highly unfortunate and the game is going to miss you, your family's going to miss you, and, you know, it's always free the way we, you know what I'm saying, I, want, I don't never want to see a black man locked down like this in these scenarios and these circumstances because, like I said, he had moved to Atlanta. He was not like, you know, running around Jersey while and he had moved out. He had did a lot of things for the city of Jersey. He had the trenches. He had ballers come in there. Uh, Nike was involved. He had like a Nike ad. He was doing big things. But like I said at the beginning of this video, the things that you do in the past can catch up to you. And I know he told me that specifically, not I like uh, in the public and things like that in a conversation. And that's exactly what he was facing. So, um, you know, Keep your head up, you know what I mean? It is what it is, and that's pretty much the update that I got. You know, he pleaded guilty to his role in the racketeering and the conspiracy and possession of a firearm by a felon. And, uh, you know, my prayers go out to him and his family, and it is what it is. But other than that, man, salute to every single one of y'all. I appreciate you watching. I'll be back soon. Rock.